close your eyes and watch your breath coming in and going out. And coming in and again and going out again. Just stick with it as continually as you can. The mind needs a place to focus so that it can observe itself. One of our main problems in life is that we go through life when we don't really know our own mind. Things come up, we say things, we wonder why we said them. We do things, we wonder why we do them. Ideas come into the mind, we don't know where they're coming from. And these things can have a huge impact on what we do and say and think. And the pleasure and pain that we experience as a result. You would think that we would try to do things that only would give rise to pleasure, but that's not the case. We do a lot of things that can give rise to pain. Physical pain, but more importantly, mental pain. So we have to look into this. Why is the mind so ignorant of itself? Well, it's not watching. It's watching other things. It's had its attention diverted. It's like a magic show where the magician does funny things with his one hand to divert your attention so he does, you don't see what the other hand is doing. And the other hand, the second hand, is the one that's actually doing the trick. The first hand is just a diversion. The mind has a lot of tricks like that, which is why the Buddha said that consciousness is like a magic show. It seems to be doing one thing, but it's actually doing something else. So you have to look at it carefully to figure out, well, where am I being distracted? Where am I not paying attention? So you stay here with the breath, because that's the thing that's closest to the mind that you can focus on. And sometimes it gives you a place where you can step out of the mind a little bit so you're not entirely taken in by its thoughts. So focus on the breath as continually as you can. Try to stay here as your home base, as the place where you come back to your default mode. And then when something comes out of the mind, you'll see it as it goes out. But you don't have to go running with it. You see, your awareness is one thing, but the running is something else. And it'll run for a little ways, and if you don't run along with it, it doesn't go very far. It just stops. So at the very least, even though you don't know where this thing is running from, at least you're not running along with it. You're not letting yourself be influenced by it. That's the first step. And then you start turning around, looking deeper into the mind. So you can see, where does the running come from? But for the time being, just try to stay right here. And learn how to resist that temptation when something comes running that you want to catch it. It's like we're old mountain lions. Anything that comes running by you, when you want to run after, you don't even know what it is. But as soon as you see something running, you assume, assume that it's something that you want to feed on. You go running after it. So when something runs past you, you don't have to go with it. You stay with the breath. If you need something to feed on, feed on the breath. No, you, at the very least, you're not under the influence of these unknown things coming out of the mind. And as you stay watching them, they become less and less unknown. That's so why you get more in charge of your life, more in, because you're more in charge of your own mind. A lot of times we think, well, if I can control everything around me, everything will be perfect. Well, that doesn't happen. There's no way you can control the world around you. You can exert a little bit of control. But that's not the real source of suffering anyhow. The real source comes from within. So if you learn how to control your mind, you've gotten control over the important part. So this is the first step, learning to stay with the breath and to resist the temptation to go running after anything else. You learn a lot about the mind just with that, with that skill right there.